now we have Senator Murkowski. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you to the panel. Um, you know, when we, when we think about hydrogen, it's kind of the, the, the new and exciting stuff, and it's yet it's not really that new, but for, for purposes of what this is going to mean um, economy-wide, I think we can clearly see the, the, the great potential. Senator Cassidy and I were just speaking about how transformative this could be in some of the communities in Alaska that are very isolated, uh, very rural. We're never going to have a pipeline. We're never going to have a pipeline out to these villages. So what is it? How are we going to make this hydrogen a, a real um, a, a reality. We're excited about the hydrogen hubs, um, uh, whether it is for geothermal opportunity out, uh, out in the Dutch Harbor on Alaska area, um, powered by the great McCushion volcano, uh, the possibilities that we have within Cook Inlet where you can marry the natural gas that we have in abundance there, uh, along with tidal uh, or wind. There's, there's great opportunity and excitement. I want to ask about lessons learned um, and, and how, because I'm kind of looking at this and saying, we can design this now. Very seldom do we have the opportunity to design a system that's going to maybe avoid the, the pitfalls and the problems that we have seen when you're trying to, trying to overlay something on top of everything else. We, we can learn a lot by looking at, at at natural gas and the build out there uh, that, that we have seen. Senator Lankford speaks to the, to the permitting issue. Uh, I think we recognize that you can have the resource, but if you can't move it because you can't get things permitted, you're no further ahead than when you started. And so if, if you have the ability, each one of you, to look at this clean slate for, for, this, for this really an extraordinary energy asset, um, that can be transformative in so many different a ways. What do we need to do? I don't know whether it's first and foremost. Uh, you know, one of the things that I think I would be curious to hear from Mr. Powers is is whether the Interstate Commerce Act is is a better regulatory uh, act than the than the Natural Gas Act. Uh, again, the permitting issues, but how? How can we look to what we have learned and avoid the pitfalls so that, to your point, Mr. Marsh, you say it's a, it's a couple decades before we really see this difference, that maybe we can actually move that needle a little bit faster and, and have a more efficient system. What would your blank slate allow you to do? And let's just start with Mr. Powers and go on down the line. And I'm, we've only got two minutes to get everybody's good ideas, so you both have about uh, a half a minute to go. Thank you, Senator, for the question. I do believe that the ICA is a better vehicle um, than the NGA. First of all, it's got two things that are clear in it. You have rates that are just and reasonable, and you have tariffs that are supposed to be non-discriminatory. It doesn't regulate the kinds of things that the Natural Gas Act does. And so with this nascent industry, I'm not quite clear what even strapping the hydrogen industry and transportation with the Natural Gas Act would mean for that industry. So you're really sort of starting with a clean slate if you, if you look at the ICA. And I would, I would sort of counsel against something that's brand new. Um, there are sort of true, tried and true methods of regulating under the ICA, and I don't believe that that uh, inclusive, ex, you know, uh, burdensome. But at the same time, one other thing I wouldn't raise, and I didn't, didn't to Senator Hickenlopper, is that is he asked about states. Very few states regulate, um, as I've seen, pipelines very much. California does, Texas does, um, Florida doesn't. So that's another thing we have to put into the calculus here. If a state doesn't regulate at all, um, what are you going to do? Okay. Mrs. Zemmerin. Thank you, Senator. Um, I, I believe you need to pass the PTC and ITC credits and the 45Q credits. Okay. This is not economic today, and we will not kickstart this economy unless we make it more economic today. And then I also laid out the changes that I believe can be mm -hmm. implemented to empower FERC. Over the last 10 years, we have repurposed the natural gas infrastructure in the United States and gone from needing to import natural gas to becoming the largest exporter of natural gas in the world. We can do this, and we've got a model that I think demonstrates it. So I'd like... I'd like to offer that I think getting the incentives going and then allowing us to get, you know, get going and get this infrastructure brought to bear. Good. Dr. Kruka. 
Hi, thank you, Senator Mikowski. So I come from a different perspective being at the University of Wyoming. So I would say, you know, we can do parts, aspects of the hydrogen industry now, but mm -hmm. continued research and development that's fuel agnostic is really important for the future as well. Mm -hmm. Mr. Marsh. Senator, I'm going to agree with Chad, but I also would like to say going from 1% to 20% in 20 years is pretty fast. And That's we could true. change the commercial industry yeah. really faster. That's true. Good. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator. Senator Hovind. Thanks, Mr. Chair. Appreciate it. Uh, 